people in a room have a power monitoring system? Any of that, a meter, a cable, a dog, a rock, anybody? Two, one, two. I'll take it. Two. I know Jim had one. Yep. Same one. Okay, all right, all right. We'll talk. I know Robin, but maybe Robin didn't want to talk to me anymore. Maybe we left him in the dark. That's okay. That's all right. All right. Okay. Power monitoring is kind of like an ex-wife. It's kind of like, it just, it's okay sometimes when it's really good, it's really good, but when it's bad, it's bad. But anyway, power monitoring is a journey. It's a, a journey. <laughs> we all want it, but we don't know how to get it. We get frustrated with all the technical jargon and all the minutia of the bits and the bytes and the mod buses and the profi buses and the DCSs and the SCADAs and the, all the stuff. I'm just sweating just thinking about it. I mean, my goodness, it, it wears you out. It does, but what we're trying to do for you is we're not trying to lock in on a proprietary system like we used to. We were guilty in the past. I admit it. PowerNet, PowerLogic, you name them, they're proprietary networks. Once you got hooked, like I call it, you get hooked on cocaine, you're, you're addicted, you're an addict. You, you love it. You love getting those amps and volts and watts. You're just excited. When you get called on the radio, like, Jim, what's the amps? My God, I got the amps. It's 800 amps. You're a hero. I mean, my gosh, you get the picture on the wall for the week. Jim was the hero of the plant that week. He could say 800 amps in five seconds. Especially when you got it on his mic, this, right? I mean, everybody's panicked. Everybody's running around like a bunch of people with their hair on fire. You keep the cool head with the power monitoring system. You're the cool guy, right? You got the hat on. You're the cool guy. I'm the computer. I'm going 787 amps. Powerful. Powerful. So to get that data at your fingertips comes with a price tag. Not money. Time. Willpower, everything. Why do I say that? Because you got an IT department. How many people have an IT department in your in your company? Everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I know. We have them too. They're good. Until you want something specific, then it's like, oh, oh, no, that's gonna be a IT ticket. A trouble ticket. Yeah. A trouble ticket? I don't even have trouble yet. I don't even know what I want. I want you to pull a piece of cat five down here now. Well, we sub that out to Network Inc. Okay, number one, get your cat five. Then you're going to get into the next conversation. Eaton tells me I need 10 IP addresses. They sold me 10 new meters. I need 10 IP addresses. IT department, I need 10 IP addresses. Nope. Why? We don't want that on our network. Deep breath. You go call back Eaton, go Daryl or Alan, and you go like, the meters are so they're useless, they're still on my desk. I can't get them on the network. Sorry to hear about that. Steve, what do you think? So I go over there, we talk about it. Uh, and I'll go talk to the IT guy directly, because I kind of am sort of this CP, free CPO from Star Wars. I can do a little protocol exchange. So I, I talk to you like this, but then I think about it. And then I process and I spit it out that way. And I can talk to the IT people. I go like, okay, what they really are talking about is they need three IP addresses. They need a static IP, non-routable. Don't put them on the DHCP server list. And you're going like, hey, guys, you know what to say about all that stuff. That's why we can't get anywhere. So I, like, I kind of get them calm. And I stroke their fur this way, not that way. Because if we stroke it that way, we don't get anywhere. Stroke their fur this way. <laughs> Gotta do it because they're feisty. They eat Snickers and Diet Mountain Dew and they're hiding up all the time. <laughs> so I try to, we try to clear the path. Now that I got disciples, I got Mike Rathman, he's a disciple, he's on board. We got Kay. 
So three of us together are going to fight by team with you. We're going to just go in, we're going to try to blaze a trail, because we know what you want. You want the amps and the bolts and the watts at your fingertips. So anyway, why do you want that stuff? I can think of a lot of reasons. See if you agree with any of these reasons. See if any of these resonate with you. Number one, I think, is what I use as sort of like the linchpin for all this. I really don't give a rip about number one myself. I'm a plant guy. I like power, amps, bolts. I want to make sure my stuff's working. But number one is your little secret weapon to get what you want. Because I know what you guys got. You got pie. That's the energy guys. That's the guys that look a little crisper than me. They might have a tie on. They might have like maybe no pocket protector. But, they, but they're a little bit cleaner. Guys, they're set up in the upper tower of the control room. You guys are maybe down in the next level. But they're, they don't get dirty as much. They got to have energy data like now because they got the boss of the plant going like, oh, what's our energy usage for the month? We got to make sure we're within the limits of the utility contract we signed up for. You might be on demand billing or if you exceed a power peak limit, you're going to go into this next extra ratcheted amount of cost for the month or the rest of the year. They're all about that. This is the mean college, the accountant people. They're all about that stuff. So if you can get them on your side, they're going to be like, I want that system too. And then you're smiling, going like, yeah, but then I get what I want too. Hey, let's make a deal. So now they're your champion to fight for the power monitoring system. You get what you want, they get what they want, and then maybe collectively they can pull your money together and get a system. Just a thought. But, the other stuff is what I think I want more to keep my plant running. Number one, maybe, is a little sweetener. How many people have this kind of stuff? Even if you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas with your power monitoring system that came along with your switch gear. Do you think you have some of this going on? Show of hands. More hands? More hands. This is what keeps everything running. You know, you guys are kind of like an orphan a little bit in a way because you're you're perceived as electrical guys, power guys. You know, they probably figure you just you've done it the way you've been doing it forever. Why do you need any more? They put the money in the control system for the, for the manufacturing side. Probably that's all under control. If you're making steel or making Q-tips or pellets or whatever, you've got control systems for that. Would they want power monitoring data? Probably too, because that way they could interweave power consumption on a process potentially that would help them calculate the cost to make a pellet or a piece of rebar or something. Maybe. So that's an avenue. So when you see terms like that, MES, SCADA, DCS, these are all the control things that smell and feel a lot like a power monitoring system, but they're for control. Here's where we come in. A little quick story. EPMS never used to stand for what I think you think it might be. How many, people, how many people know what that stands for, EPMS? Any guesses? I'll give you the first one. E, e is electric? Well, 20 years ago, you'd be wrong. It was it'd be environmental. The foreseer system as we know it today has evolved over the last 30 years. When I first got involved with it back in the early 90s, they were called the Data Tracks Company out in Colorado, right in the foothills of Boulder. Beautiful mountain vistas, laid back people. Now they got their special substances they can take out there. They're even happy, you know, so it's all good. So, anyway, they're out there. Well, then they got acquired by, uh, at the time, Exide, and that's when I got involved. And then they became a little more under the corporate culture. They had to adapt a little bit. And they changed the name to Forseers. But the reason why Data Track Systems Zero was invented because back in the 80s when Intel, Motorola were making silicon chips, they needed a way to safely, safely guarantee the environment in which those silicon uh, uh, wafers were processed. And so they created an environmental processing system to regulate the air quality, uh, water temperature, and all that kind of stuff. So that, out of that came the data tracks down first year system. It was a real-time, quick updated data acquisition system that could be used for anything, and we ended up ending up using it for electrical, primarily. So they've changed the name from environmental power monitoring system to electrical 
power modules. So what we're trying to do is help you. We're trying to say, like, this is what you want. This is what you've got. This is what that you have now. Is there a marriage between the two? Maybe. The network becomes sometimes the marriage. How many people think you have a control systems network outside of the IT business network? you think you have that today? Where you've got all your control separated from what you call the business network. What I mean by the business network would be when you log in on your computer, you can get on your company homepage, get to all that stuff. Do you think the two are mixed or do you think they're separate? Anybody? Separate. separate? I would agree. Now we come into the picture. Say we've overcome all the hurdles to get to the point where we've got you interested, your company is interested in getting a quotation on a foresee or monitoring system. Now we're going to have to figure out where we're going to put it. Do we put it on the business network or do we put it on the control network? Or, in my opinion, we create a third one, a power network. If you take away nothing today from all of my craziness is that I, what I really mean is that we need a power network that you can control, that you can get what you want, and you could potentially share that data with other people. So what we're trying to do is create a focal point here that could be a managed switch, it could be a traffic cop, it could be whatever, but you would agree that all the things you want to monitor, power related, are for you and yours to control. If you want to get on your computer and look at it, that's where the problem comes in though. Because now you want to log in as you on your computer and see all this stuff, but if you're on a different network, you're not going to see it. Unless you've got a dedicated computer out in the, out in the shop somewhere where it wires back directly to that one computer, and that's what I'm recommending we do for a while with some of these sites where we're trying to get that momentum built up, where you show some interest because to get that level of enthusiasm for your management to see it, sometimes seeing is believing. What I've done a lot is where we'll get like a temporary computer, either we'll provide it or you can find one on the shop. We'll get the foreseer software loaded on it, demonstrate it just like this on a big screen for management to see the capabilities. And then you say, like, this is all great, but I can't get it on my computer. And then they go, like, oh, you think about it. And they talk amongst themselves in their little jibber jabber talk. Yeah, we can make that happen. Well, now you tell me. Before, when you were trying to get the budget approved and everything, they were pushing back, fighting you. Seeing is believing. And I think if you, we can demonstrate this stuff earlier in the process, I think the better for everybody because it's hard to imagine what you can't see. But the problem with this stuff is you never get to see the Holy Grail because you can never overcome the IT problems. So my suggestion would be when you work with electrical equipment company and my counterpart that works for the Foreseer Group out of Alabama, you talk about practical steps to get a power monitoring system in place sooner than later before the capital budget expires. You got a little window usually. And you got to strike when the window's hot, and we got to get at least something to show. So that's my advice. If you're interested in this stuff, if you've been always wanting amps and bolts at your fingertips, and you haven't wanted to go cry to the control guys upstairs, and you want your own destiny, I think this would be a, a realistic approach, is to start with a couple power meters and, uh, and grow from there. And then once you start seeing the power of having data about the stuff, and I'd say just take the next step. Because it, it, it is a lot to take in. And there's a lot of people talking about what it is, but nobody really wants to get down to what it is. You guys need amps, volts, watts, now. You can't wait. You want it now. <laughs> this way works too. You can put a, a central server, nothing but to be a data collector. This is what we'll do a lot of times with OSI Pi or some of these other type systems where we 
create a power network. We put the data in a spot like a SQL server. Hope I'm not hurting anybody too bad. The SQL server would be a common point where all the data goes. And then it's we suck it out of there, and they suck it out of there. That's a common point. That's another approach. Now you've got a little more buy-in from both people. This is not an Eaton product, by the way. This is Microsoft SQL or Oracle or whatever you want it to be. Now you've got a common point to talk about how you're going to get data. Once we get data, we can make all the other stuff we want to do. If all they want is just energy for the month, they can pull it out of there. So that's another way to do it. This is primarily Eaton equipment, and that gives me a chance to say this is that when you have Eaton equipment, we don't charge for the device drivers. We're just happy that you came and wanted to have some software. So we're not going to charge you twice. If it is third party, we have to develop sometimes those drivers in cooperation with Schneider or Siemens or GE. But when it's Eaton equipment, at least, for goodness sake, you're not going to pay twice. So that was the message there. This is kind of a snapshot of all the stuff that we monitor today by category. Everything from UPSs and PDUs in your uh, data centers. I don't think there's any data center people in here today, probably, unless you've got data center responsibility for the plant. But I would say if I had to guess, we're still probably data center heavy in this application for first year because of the critical nature of the power monitor. This gives you an idea of layering of what goes on. We have a lot of discussion about network security. So if you ever get asked through the process, like, is Eaton safe? Are they really safe? I mean, really. Are, is really Eaton safe? I don't want this garbage on my network, so are they really safe? Steve said we are. We've got the cyber security. So that, that's a part of it. That is, with all the hacking going on, nobody wants something that they don't understand. So that, I have to admit, is something that the IT department will want to talk to us about in terms of what's the security level of this system. We sell it by channels, but I don't get hung up on that. That's the way old school points type systems are based. I need a 20,000 tag list software. We, we, we still kind of do that, but that's not my first thing about the product. We can do a lot of different things with uh, drivers and gateways. So you can imagine if you've got a lot of third-party equipment out there coming through a GE switchgear or Siemens or whatever, you got to get the data in a point where we can bring it into the system. So a lot of that gets engineered in as we need to. Now for the fun part. Like I said, start small, pick a couple meters, get your brother at the plant excited, sign up on a special thing if you want to put your name on the company thing on the wall going like, Jim and Bob are going to sign up for a special activity for the month. We're going to get a power monitoring system for the plant. Kind of put yourself out there, but might be kind of neat. But if you could pull it off, you could show this on the screen going like, well, this is what we did. In two months, we were able to put together a picture of the plant. We are actually able to get a dashboard. How many people heard the word dashboard? Boy, that word is like, wow, a dashboard. Oh my God, Eaton's got dashboards. I need one. That's another one. So I think if you could really get it sold kind of overtly, energy for the accounting people and a dashboard, they might be your new best friend going, like, we're even hiding out on me here. I need this for my. We have Apex goals. They have, you, know, you probably have your own goals, like special projects goals, play the month goal, whatever. If you could be the hero to put together a dashboard for people to look at some KPI, that's another one. I like their metrics. That would be cool. And then you can get into the stuff that you and I want to do. What's the amps? What's the current draw on that motor right now? Am I in tolerance? Am I not? Why'd that line go down? That's all the stuff we care about. The other stuff we just got to sometimes put up with. When you really get that squirrel in the night, I had a squirrel come out of my car yesterday. Because I was at the Chippy Lou getting my oil change. And a squirrel jumped out. Freaked the guy out. He goes, what the heck? And ran in his office. And they couldn't find him right away. And then he came out 
of the office, and then the network went down. I'm going, oh my god, the squirrel took down the whole Jiffy Lube network for all of Greenville. Wow. If I had my power quality system in there, I'm able to capture the waveform event at the time of the chomping on the wire. I could have captured the waveform right then, and I could identify that that was truly my squirrel out of my car that brought down the entire network. So, <laughs> power quality data is something you're only going to get out of the instrument. No way can software create this type of level of sensitivity down to the cycle. So always keep that in mind. There's a lot of confusion like, I'm going to get a $100,000 software system. I'm going to capture waveforms. I'm going to find out when squirrels bite on the wires or whatever happens. You're only as good as your devices. Just keep that in mind. There's no substitute. You have to have the device capture the quick waveform data in the instrument, and then the software pulls it out. You can't fake that. But this is the stuff that we're going to live and die by. Once we get the thing calmed down, because I'll tell you, nothing's perfect. The first time we put the software system in, you're going to get a thousand alarms. I'm not lying. You're going to just be emailed to death. You're going to be in the sea of confusion until we get this calmed down. I call it turn it down. Where now maybe I'm only getting one critical, because I know that breaker over in PDP5 is racked out. I just know that. The breaker's racked out. I'm always going to have a red critical, but I know that. But then when I get the second one, then I'm going to get nervous. Once you get everything all calmed down, those alarms actually start making sense. But when you're first commissioning a system, it's a lot. So getting it to make sense makes sense for everybody. It's pretty easy to navigate. I click on the red. It takes me to the next level. I know what the alarm is. I see what the full deal is, where it is, what it is. And then I can acknowledge it, and then I can bring up data that shows me what it actually is. So it's a drill down approach. And then if I really want to go back in, I can trend maybe about two hours before and after when the event was, and kind of see the current building up or whatever was happening to cause that trip to happen in the breaker. The data is captured every minute. So you have one minute resolution in the database. They call that the high resolution database. So one minute. You're not going to catch motor inrush with that kind of resolution by any means, but you're definitely going to be able to tell what's been happening to the one minute tick any time you want. Here's the other thing I think people are really getting excited about. I know I'm losing you. It's getting close to lunch. I'm trying to just push on. we got five minutes. We'll do it. We'll do it. Reports. Here you got energy, dashboards, reports. Reports are so good because it covers so many sins. You can say, well, here's the report. Wow. Where'd you get that from? Well, I got it from the power monitoring system. No kidding, really? You can produce a report for me that I can take to my board meeting? Yeah, you didn't ask. So I thought I'd just tell you I can do reports. This is going to help sell it, too, because nothing like looking like a deer in the headlights at a board meeting when they're grilling you over stuff. You can just say, here it is. Here's the report. And you walk out. We're done. A nice one. We're in Seinfeld, the summer of George. I'm out of here on a high note. <laughs> George, summer of George. But anyway, no, really, the reports are going to be the key that are going to help sell the system, and it's going to help you be that hero that lays on to the management side of the fence because perception is everything. When you can actually get the data in a concise way that you can present it, all of a sudden people are going to wake up. I've seen it happen, and it's a powerful thing. Let's talk a little bit about how we get it all put together. Like I said, I like a simple approach. Once you get some buy-in and you get people on board with what you're trying to do, is then when we can come in, uh, Gordon Sexton's in the back here. He has a group of people under him that have uh, what we call power systems automation skills. We have a sales group and we have a deployment group. And they bring in people to do the site assessment. They have people that can do the graphics and a lot of the development off-site in Colorado or Pittsburgh. They're going to work with you step by step on what you want when you finally get into a real specification. But before that, I would say, just in my humble opinion from doing this for 20 years, start small, take a couple meters, get some screens, pull the manager by his hair in there and show them. This is what I did. With me and a dog and my aunt, we, we, we did this 
in like a week. So now can I have the budget to do the real thing? And then we talk. So Ed Sheely is our guy for the Southeast. He wasn't able to make it today. He's locked in the trunk of my car. I wouldn't let him out because I want to talk to him. Because I love this stuff. But you can see that this is a national program. It's not just a South Carolina program. We got smart people out there that know a lot of stuff, and they live through a lot of different things. We've done stuff for the government. We, if it wouldn't be for Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Apple, there probably wouldn't be as near as many four senior systems in the state of South Carolina, North Carolina combined. That's where they are. They're in these buildings when you're on the interstate and you kind of look at this squirrely, weird-looking building, you don't know there's no name on it. It's probably one of those top-secret data centers. They're running this stuff. They're the ones that are basically putting it through its paces and making sure it works, because it has to work. So when you can't get your Facebook to work, you're mad. So it's a big deal. That's all I got. Anybody have any questions? I'm here all weekend. Uh, we'll talk about power monitoring. We can talk about meters. We can talk about whatever. And, uh, so thank you. I appreciate the time.